Um, <clears throat> after Van Curler had this uh, sense that he always wanted to be out there, he always wanted to be on the edge of the frontier. Um, he leaves Fort Orange, and he wasn't far enough. He saw that the 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 Mohawk River presented some possibilities, better possibilities than where he was living along the Hudson. He had asked in the time of Dutch if he could start a settlement um, on the Mohawk. And it was at the transition, uh, it was at a transitional point. Um, so he was allowed to go out there, but it wasn't until the English took over that this little community that Colonel Van Curler started became an actual town. This is Schenectady, New York. And uh, at that time, Schenectady was basically uh, a small fort, uh, a Dutch church, a mill, um, houses, brewery. Um, and this is this painting, Schenectady, around 1690. Uh, it was around that time that Schenectady was attacked by the French and Indians. Um, and pretty much destroyed. This is what it would have looked like at that time. And we know that it, um, we don't know exactly what all these buildings look like. We have a pretty good idea of what the church looked like. But there's a wonderful historical document um, that I referred to when I created this piece. It was a map drawn by Wolfgang Romer in 1695, in which he shows the footprint of all these buildings. But he also, which was wonderful, indicated the pavilion roof and the cupola of the dish. So I know that that was there. I know the mill was there. I know the dam's there. I know the water wheel was there. I don't know that the mill looked like that, but it functioned like that. It isn't, if you don't take this as a literal translation of what Schenectady is at, at that time, this is a textual idea of what Schenectady is at that time. It's that density and that general look. It was the Navy house later? Yes, it is quite a bit later. Um, this painting is called Morning Mist on the Hudson. Um, this is much later. This is the 1780s. Um, this is uh, a cache being loaded um, on the East Coast River, being loaded with produce to be taken to Manhattan. This is the um, Peter Winnie House. Um, the Peter Winnie House was built in, uh, in the uh, early 18th century. Uh, this house has, is under uh, restoration right now. It looks very much like this. Um, it was used, this. This painting was used on the cover of a book, a uh, uh, um, the nuclear, uh, uh, it's an architecture work by John Stevens, vernacular architecture of the Dutch. Um, and when I was working on this project, um, I started to learn a little bit about the Winnies and, uh, and uh, uh, exactly how this house came to be built. Peter Winnie the Elder arrived in the 1640s and built a, a small house on um, Red Banks of the River. He was one of the adventurers. Um, his son Daniel built a house and had a farm. Oh, these farms were tenant farms. Um, had his farm about a quarter of a mile inland uh, from his father's farm. Daniel had a son, Peter. So we have Peter. This is third generation when was about another. This is about a half a mile or three quarters of a mile from the river. This house still exists. Um, Peter has a son, Daniel. So we have four generations. Peter, Daniel, Peter, Daniel. And son build, builds a house about another quarter of a mile. Now, the reason why I'm telling you all this is because the last of the four houses was being demolished about years ago. It was discovered by a, a bill and recognized to be of historic significance. So he halted the construction, bought the building, um, and through some kind of luck, connected with the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Met decided that they would take the remains of the house uh, the, the one room that was really in the best condition was the main room of the generation house. And uh, it's now been incorporated into what will be the revised American wing. And that's set to open in May. Um, <clears throat> because I worked on this house, I was commissioned by the Metropolitan Museum to do a painting for the exhibit. So this is the painting I did for the Met. This is the fourth generation wing house. 
you can see that it's, it doesn't, it's not even as grand as it's, it's a simple building with just a straight uh, gable roof. Well, the only architecturally interesting feature of the house, you'll notice it has these unusually painted shutters. Now that's not an invention on my part. The map wouldn't let me invent anything. Um, but the reason those shutters look like that is because when they pull this house apart, between the new walls and the old walls of the building, they found one of those shutters. And it was still painted exactly like that. That would be part of the exam. Moving along time, the English period, um, this is uh, the siege of Fort William Henry. English take over from the Dutch in the 1670s. The little flip in the, in the 1690s, but the English gain control and hold on. From the very day the English come here, um, they're involved in war. They're involved in the war with the Dutch. For the next 50 years, they prepared for a war with the French, which eventually happens, and that's what's going on here. It, you probably are familiar with the last of Mohicans. This is Fort William Henry in the background. This is Lake George. Um, Lake George Village today is over there. These are Montcalm's soldiers arriving. Um, they landed on a small beach uh, just north of the fort. At night, they dug tunnels, uh, these uh, trenches uh, from the beach in toward the fort, and they rolled their cannons in those ditches, and as the cannons got closer, they started bombarding the fort, and um, eventually the English um, surrendered the fort to the French. And, um, um, a catastrophic massacre occurred after that. But I wanted this painting to represent, um, I want faces to tell a story about uh, combat and, and that, that, that sense of um, anxiety uh, when you know you're going to be going into battle. We have two different groups here. We have, these are Marines, French Marines, trained professional soldiers. These are militia from Canada, um, a different kind of of a soldier, more of a guerrilla fighter. Um, this is all the pain of all that I did um, after the American Revolution. Um, it's, uh, it actually tells the story, of, it's called The Return of the Experiment. And although this painting picks this panoramic view of the city, it's really about the arrival of that little sloop. You can see the people who have kind of gathered along the banks of the river. The sloop was called the event at that time was the nickname for the government of the United States, the experiment. Um, after the English were gone, American captain ships anywhere, they could where they wanted. Um, the captain of that sloop, his name was Stuart Dean, decided that with the war over, he was going to take a 50-foot sloop, Albany sloop, and nail it from here to China, which successfully did it took a year and a half. And after that voyage, it was a great celebration in February in Manhattan, Manhattan, and that continued as he went up river. And this painting depicts his arrival in his home port of Albany. It's a large painting; it has lots of details. But one of the things that I like to talk about um, when you look at the details of painting is this wonderful juxtaposition of Dutch architecture and English architecture. That's us. That's New York. That's what we're about. That's why we're different. Um, we have this heritage that came from those early uh, settlers from the Netherlands. And we have mixing into that other cultures, and we get a texture that becomes uniquely us, uniquely New York.